how are you guys? Wonderful. So good. How are you? I'm great. Um, I just finished watching your movie and I have lots to talk to you about. So I'm very excited to be chatting with you (laughs) about this. But um, my first question is for you, Thomas. So this isn't your first feature, but it's your first feature fiction film. And you worked a lot of documentary before. So what was that? A lot. You have a a feature documentary in a short. What was that like moving from documentary into fiction? And also why that transition? Uh, Well, it was all, God, I've got such a complicated story. Uh, It was always my (laughs) my intention, right? But, but, um, and I have, and I produced, while I was shooting that doc, I, I was producing other people's narrative projects and, and, uh, you yeah. know, I produced a hundred thousand dollars short and I produced like, uh, really like, you know, meaty, 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 meaty projects. And, and that doc was essentially film school for me. And I got, ah. you know, over five years, um, more or less. And, and then I got ridiculously lucky with it. And, you know, we won Hollywood film festival and it ended up on Netflix and everything. So, um, yeah, I, I just, that was my film school. And then I was off and running after that. And I had done, so I, I, you know, did some shorts and things also. So, um, so it was like, it was a stranger to storytelling, but yeah, um, I'll never do a doc again. It was, <laughs> it took a lot out of me. So this is where I belong. And uh, yeah, narrative uh, 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 fiction from now on. Okay. So you think fiction, fiction is easier for you than documentary filmmaking? Oh, not easier. It's just what I want to do. I mean, oh. it's not, it's just, and it's not as, it, it is, it's a different kind of taxing. I'll put it that way. Fair enough. So then what, you co-wrote the script for this film. What, did. where did this idea come from? Oh, I was a homicide detective. For, uh, I was a cop for 15 years and I worked child crimes and homicide and all kinds of things. So that's kind what? of where this, yeah, this is where this all came from. I mean, it was essentially, you know, because I've seen these scenarios like Cora, like I've known, I've known her a hundred times over, like, um, and I just, I know these characters, I know this world, so I just kind of folded that into a supernatural setting and and uh, and and threw that in a blender, and here we are. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh my God! Wow. So you lived a horror story for fifteen years, doing all of that. Um, I lived with this... people with horror, which is awful. That's but yeah. true. That's true. That's a better way to put it. But then Anna, what was that like working with Thomas and with all that experience that he has had in that field and informing your character as Cora? Well, you know, when you go into projects, you really have to trust your collaborators and your director. Um, And I knew from our first Zoom meeting because I just knew he was coming from a very authentic place and a very passionate place place and I felt like he knew this film backwards and forwards and that's when I got scared I was like am I your Cora <laughs> you know what I mean like yeah. can I play this role that I know that like you guys have been working on this for a long time um, but I immediately trusted him I asked him you know how we were going to be shooting it he seemed to have everything like basically storyboarded in your mind it felt like you knew this so so well that I was like okay they know what's happening and and I trust him. So like, I can do this. I'm going to kill this for, for them. And um, I'm going to make Cora someone who hopefully a lot of audiences can relate to and want to go on her journey throughout the entire film. Yeah. Well, Thomas, how long were you working on the From Black script? How long was that a story in your head? Oh, I, you know, not, not for, not too long before I started okay. really hammering it out. And then I got together okay. with Jess and Flower, my co-writer, and yeah. I kind of had the first act worked out and then he just like crushed the rest of it. And then we went back and forth over a couple of years and it pushed during COVID and that kind of extended it, but the strip, the script got stronger and, and we just kept going back and forth and, and chiseling it out until we got, got it to where it ended up. Cool. And I, so what was the research process like in crafting your ritual and the whole, like in the inspiration that was behind the multi-step ritual that is kind of a centerpiece of From Black? Well, funny enough, uh, you know, we almost nothing. We wanted it to be completely contrived. So we, we knew that we wanted to put a lot of energy into making the practical parts of the world super real and grounded. And then we okay. figured that would give us license to kind of do whatever the hell we wanted in terms of the fantastical stuff. So we just kind of, we just made it up. We didn't really oh, yeah. want to invoke any spirits. Yeah, that too. <laughs> so so what, that what was really my question as someone who is like, I'm pretty 
very grounded, but super, like, get superstitious. I'm like, is there any fear of invoking something when you're performing these rituals? Obviously, on house. camera, but it was a knows? whole house. Yeah. And an oh, old yes. town. Like, I don't know if you know anything about Natchez, Mississippi, but it has a haunted, like, vibe about it. I had trouble no sleeping in my little house every night. I would hear oh, really? noises. Like I'm a big, I have like, I own two Ouija boards. Like I'm into it. I'm very like, I'm a believer. So I was like, oh God, what's happening? This is crazy. <laughs> I mean, the, the movie feels haunted. So I'm, I, I'm glad that the location fit the vibe because it does feel very kind of cursed a little bit, like an air really, or something really over the weight, town. It has a weight to it. Like it took, yeah. it's got, yeah. yeah, we took some Natchez with us when we left, that's for sure. Oh my god. Well then it's like Anna, what was it like filming those ritual parts? They looked so I mean, especially the parts where you're really just confined to a circle, even with another person. And there it had to be such an interesting kind of playing with that space. So what was your experience like filming those moments in particular? Um, well, literally, you know, every day we shot, Thomas would go, this is the worst day of your life. And then you say, <laughs> next day, now this is the worst day of your life. Now this is the worst day of your life. And I was like, bring it, bring it on. Um, so definitely filming those scenes, you know, especially not to give anything away, but when you have the character of Abel, you know, going through what he is going through and the effects are so good and they're so real. And I'm not mm -hmm. someone who handles blood very easily. Like my boyfriend will slice his finger chopping, chopping something and I'll faint. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, no. And I'm that kind of person. So I was very, you know, it's, it's like, you, you don't even really, you know, have to act that much when, when it's happening right in front of you and you're seeing this person go through this. So it was, um, once they say act, once Thomas said action, you know, the camera would roll and I would just basically put myself in Cora's shoes and experience like how would she feel watching something like this happen to her it's yeah. pretty wild well and I mean Cora's going through a ridiculously hard mental journey to put it lightly this entire film and I feel like Anna you are put through a mental emotional and physical ringer as a performer and playing this character so what what is that true like what was that experience for you becoming Cora and bringing Cora to life it's, it's really exciting to get to play a character like this that's so different from the characters that I've played in the past. I yeah. think just from my very first conversations about the character down to like what she was wearing, you know, I just kept saying Cora wants to disappear. She wants to mm -hmm. not stand out, you know, just my body language of being like hunched over and trying to kind of disappear in my own life was something that I really wanted to, to do whenever I was on set. Um, so carrying that around and the weight of her guilt and her shame for what has happened to her child and the parts of it that are her fault, it really, it definitely starts to affect you as a person, especially when you're living with that day in and, and day out. It, yeah. There were some hard, really hard, very emotionally taxing days on the film, um, mm -hmm. but I was really, you know, excited about it as an actress to get to be able to do that. And very sad, obviously, when we wrapped because I really fell in love with Cora and who she was and how she was kind of this fuck up um, who kept fighting though the whole way through and that's something that I identify with as me Anna the actress um it was definitely relieving when I didn't have to go through that <laughs> every day you know as a person but yeah it definitely you know affected me while we were on set but I think for the benefit of the movie and for the story that we were trying to tell was there anything that you did um, on set that you would do to either get into Cora's headspace or get out of Cora's headspace? Did you have any kind of your own personal rituals around that? Yeah, I listen to music a lot when I'm, I'm playing dramatic roles. So I would carry my headphones around, especially for the, the group therapy scene and would really just kind of want to keep to myself. And there was one particular song that I would play over and over and over. And I'm going to keep that song a secret because it's like very okay. special to me. <laughs> Fair but, enough. But, but like, I, I like find music to be very emotional. And so it would basically put me in this, 
emotional place that I felt like my heart needed to be in in order to be in the scene of, at that particular time. Yeah. Um, and then, so Thomas, when you were shaping Cora, like in the writing process, how did you collect and like in the writing process, but then when you meet Anna, how did you guys collaborate together? You know, did Anna and this is for you too, like, did you bring something, anything new to the character that kind of made Cora even bigger than what was on the page? Um, Thomas, I'll start with you. I, I think my, my, most important in my my first and most important kind of uh direction to Anna was that I wanted Cora to be broken but not weak that was always the kind of that was the sweet spot right um and then it was uh, yes like it was incredible to see another human and the right human like you know bring her to life I mean my my writing partner and I had kind of been sitting in a vacuum with this thing for three years and um you know we had a couple of, of table reads via zoom with different casts and different iterations of the cast and then once yeah once we had it Anna and John were just unbelievable and every day to watch them make these people come alive was just like like I'll never understand the um the, the like the stringent writer or director that wants everything said exactly how it's on the page and exactly what they have in their head because so much of the magic is just sitting back when you have the right people in front of that camera and just watching them become those humans that that, that oh it's unbelievable it was incredible experience sincerely I can't even and I cannot wait for I keep saying it uh, to here and there, but I, I, there's a part of me that feels guilty that this is horror because it, you know, horror doesn't get the respect. It, it, like part of me wishes for the, for the cast's sake that it was drama. So that it would get, it would get all the respect that it, that it, that it, you know, that it deserves. Aww. And um, yeah, they're just incredible, incredible in the movie. Thanks. Thomas. Of course. Like, thank you. Are you kidding? Like just, <laughs> hmm. Well, and it's such a small cast. It's got to be, you know, it is such like so reliant on these performances because they're, I mean, a lot of the time, Anna, it is just you and, and Abel like sitting in a circle or in this empty house. And it is like in the emotional weight of this film. You definitely feel it from everybody for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah you, really have to trust. you have to trust your scene partner. You know, I trusted John inexplicably because he's so talented and such a wonderful person and actor. Um, and then I, I obviously trusted Thomas and, you know, Jen, who played um, Alice and my sister, everybody. There's just a level of just live, you know, and you don't get that all the time as an actor. You get really controlled a lot of the time and you feel like someone's puppet and it's not really authentic to you. Um, but my goal was to come in and not play an idea of who I thought this person was, but to just really live and the camera hopefully will catch it. And that's, you know, I think after seeing the film, I'm always very nervous to see things that I do. I don't watch everything that I do also, uh -huh. but I think that I was excited to see this one because I was like, oh God, did, did it translate to what I was doing really translate? And I was very, very, very proud when I saw the first cut that they sent me, so. As a, as a director, I had to kind of walk a line too, because I, I, I don't want, especially as a first time director, you don't want to ever come off like you don't know what you want. And that was never the case. I always knew what I wanted, but I also kind of enjoyed watching like John and Anna kind of work a scene out too. Not that I, I mean, I was right there and I would interject when I thought it was necessary, but I kind of liked, if you let them take the reins, they'll end up in a place that's more real than you could have ever put them in as a director. So yeah. there's kind of a, there's kind of a, a a dance you know that's not just like I want this do this it's it, it can't be that but it also can't be completely just go do your thing that's so it was a really cool dynamic that we had and I really think that uh, I attribute a lot of the the uh, the of the authentic nature of the performances to just them figuring out where they needed to be in that space and and this word's not right that doesn't sound right coming out of my mouth and yeah it was just a it was a great experience that's awesome and you talked a little bit about the location but I wanted to hear more about how you found that house like the, the big giant house 
So it's actually, actually, I probably shouldn't, I'll tell you that off air, but uh, yeah, we, it was right down to the wire. We, because we, the house needed all kinds of things. It needed a hallway. Oh, okay. Not very common. It needed like the kitchen to be in the right spot and it needed kind of a secular thing to it to where we could work in a, in a big circle. And um, it was tough. We didn't find the house till probably 10 or 12 days out or something like that. So, and it's right. It, it it's right downtown Natchez, so it's not it's not the farmhouse that it looks like. It's, oh. it's a, yeah, it's pretty cool the way that the the movie magic had to be employed for sure. But but we ended up with definitely finding the right house. That's for sure. That's so cool. Movie magic is so impressive how you can trick people thinking, oh yeah, it's definitely in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, um, cool. Just kidding. And, and what we did, we pulled off so well that I don't even want to early. We'll let people watch the movie first, and then later on there'll be <laughs> something where we talk about it. And so were there any creepy happenings on set ever? Oh. Anna. There were, uh, were there? The were very uh, the, we had to change the only location that we that we got we had to change a, a lot of the shooting for was our oh, very yeah. last day, the very last scene in the movie. And that jail was like it had been dormant for 40 years, I think, just sitting. Uh -huh. And um we would be shooting and there would be giant clangs down the hallway. Giant clangs. Um, metal on metal. Clang. And no and one else was and... in the, the, the jail. No one. And then yeah. we realized, remember there was like the hanging room around the corner. There was like an execution room around the corner the from set. And also the scene, this is pretty crazy. So the scene, my, like the, my final scene when I'm in jail and I'm, you know, I don't want to ah, yeah. spoil anything, yeah. but I'm backing mm -hmm. up or whatever. Um, and I'm alone in there and I was starting to give me some like crazy vibes, like being stuck in the jail, you know, like while everybody is outside and I'm shooting there by this myself. Really is, like locked in there by this giant like yeah. wheel you have to turn and it shuts the doors. So and crazy, but I looked above my head and there was a drawing from a previous prisoner and I took a photograph of it. And I had, I have drawn this like through, I do, it's like a doodle that I would draw as a little kid that my dad taught me to draw, that my granddad taught him to draw. And I used to draw it. Do you know Kilroy? Like Kilroy, yeah. he was above my head. Someone had drawn him. And he was right there. And I was like, oh my God, I'm in the right place. This is wild. <laughs> like a prison. Goosebumps on my arms. <laughs> crazy. It was crazy. So and also here's another fun story. So I know we've talked about this a lot, but back in 2014, is that what it was, Thomas? Yeah. Um, so I had, I was on set and it was the scene where I was levitating. I can talk about that because it's in the trailer, but I was <laughs> levitating. And I was like, you know, in a white dress and had the dark hair and, you know, I've usually had blonde hair my whole life and I dyed my hair dark for this role. But as I'm doing the levitating, I was like, wait a minute, I've dreamt this exact thing before. But also I remember going like on the internet and finding an image that represented my dream. And it was of a girl levitating in a white dress with dark hair. And I went on my phone and I found it. And it had, I had taken the screenshot of that in 2014, which is also, I don't know if Thomas wants to get into it, but it was a pivotal year for you. Yeah, yeah that was my, I, I got stabbed that year and retired mental, uh, uh, mentally, I like retired uh, medically from my prior existence. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Pretty wild. Wait. The <laughs> all right well this movie was meant to be the two of you were meant to work together so many weird synchronicities i love that um on that note anna and thomas thank you so much for speaking thank with me so about from you. black i love it this was awesome so thank you so much and everyone from black streaming on shutter now please check it out and amc plus and amc plus yeah thank you